Hi everyone. Uh, this is my new laser cutter that I ordered from Alibaba from a company called Sinmic, which I do not recommend doing business with. Um, the laser cutter is mostly fine. Uh, this is going to be a little mini review and introduction. I've shot quite a bit of video about this thing and setting it up and my impressions so far, but I don't have any kind of an intro. And so that's what this video is going to be. This is the shipping crate that the laser cutter came in. Um, it's, according to the bill of lading, it weighed 140 pounds or so. They put it in my truck with a uh, forklift. So I didn't really have to lift it except getting it out. Uh, my wife and I were able to lift it up just fine. I put it on the Jeeper Creeper there to get it around the back and into the building. And that worked fine. I thought it was held on by staples, but it was really held on with these nails. Um, so I took a long straight blade screwdriver, <clears throat> levered the lid off, and inside It's a large cardboard box, and the laser cutter looked just like this in the box. Um, everything, including a Ziploc bag with the manual and the CD of Moshi Draw, as if anybody has CD drives anymore, and a USB license key dongle thing, which is pretty hysterical coming from um, sort of low market, no name Chinese places, but be that as it may. Um, so you just lift up the main bed and there was the exhaust fan, exhaust fan duct, air pump, water pump, and the laser head. So just unpack everything. Um, the first time I unpacked it, I obviously uh, unclipped the um, zip ties that held all this stuff stationary during transit. So that was secured. Um, overall, it actually looks like it was shipped really, really well. There wasn't a lot of outward damage on the box itself. So I'm fairly satisfied with that. Tube was entirely undamaged um, and it seems to fire just fine. One of the things that really irritated me about this when I finally figured it out and thanks to the help at um, Sawmill Creek forums there's actually a really active and knowledgeable group of people on their engravers forum I found out that um, even though this was advertised as a 50 watt laser, it's there's no chance that it's actually producing 50 watts, and I'm probably lucky if it produces 30. The reason uh, there's two reasons for that that we figured out. One, um, the physics of CO2 lasers is such that the length is the primary determining factor of the power and this tube is 700 millimeters long so that's the first clue uh, the second clue is that they say you're not supposed to run it over six milliamps and um, in fact if you try to run it even nearing six milliamps the tube cuts out and sounds very unhappy. Now, I think a pretty funny, and not necessarily funny haha, -ha, but funny sad error in the book is that they say you're not supposed to run it more than 0.6 amps, which is insane. Uh, so I clarified with them it is 6 milliamps, that's what they meant, but when you make that kind of an error, it's pretty shocking. Uh, that's just of course among the many ridiculous errors in this book. 
my favorite of which is the instruction to nip the rough cast in the upper left or sorry in the left upper side of the nipper and put a piece of wet newspaper on the surface of the rough cast unfortunately i don't know what a nip how to nip something i don't know what rough cast is i don't know what a nipper is and so that's just a ridiculous thing telling me to put wet newspaper on something and to do something to something so i really have no idea what they're talking about i figured out that rough cast I, this is, I think, what they're calling rough cast. And I think what they're telling me to do is put wet newspaper on it when I'm engraving. As to the upper left of the nipper, still no idea. I still haven't figured that one out. Okay, so what else do I have to say about this in general? Uh, the internals, I actually think, are well done. Um, to the extent that they, they at least look safe. All the connections have a screw terminal box. I'm pretty sure these are these are Phoenix terminals, or at least they are probably Phoenix compatible terminals. Um, everything is wire loomed, by and large. The connections in line. There's one. It's going to be very difficult to see, but. On the pointing laser, there's a transition right here, and that is nicely heat shrunk, which is good. Uh, the Moshi board is an absolute piece of crap. It is the first thing to be replaced. I've already ordered all of the components for the Laos um, open source laser open source control board. I'm going to put a link down in the description for their website. Uh, they're I think based out of the Netherlands and at least the um, JAP I think, J-A-A-P I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that name. He was really cool about it. I emailed him just asking for a kit and instead of sending me a kit he said you know you probably would save a lot of money ordering the parts yourself in the U.S. and I'll send you the circuit boards rather than um, paying me in euros to send you all the parts. And indeed he was right and ended up saving 40 or 50 dollars from doing that and so I'm very appreciative. The front panel connectors are fine. There's the main power switch is a decent clunking power switch. These are idiotic. Um, what's the purpose of this button? It is not clear. Turns out this is the pointing laser, just to tell you where roughly it's going to start cutting. The test button is just a, a momentary button to fire the laser. And the engraving button is also a mystery. It's, it's wired up to the P-terminal on the laser power supply, which I think is the protection terminal. So if this is open, I think the laser cutter thinks that the protection system is saying don't fire the laser. But it's not obvious what that actually does. Um, I, I don't think I've tried having this off and trying to fire the laser and seeing what happens. But um, I'm going to re be replacing that with a proper protection system, including a lid switch, a water flow switch, and a temperature switch. At, at a minimum. I'm going to replace this uh, front panel wholesale when I get the louse in. I ordered the display board as well. Uh, I've got a lot of video recorded. I'm going to be editing those um, as the weeks go on. Um, but I really wanted to record this intro video to set the context. I'm not the kind of person that's really comfortable speaking on camera, so let me know what you think. Let me know if you think this is useful um, and worthwhile. Um, as you may know, I'm much more of a, of a text blogger. There is a, a topic that I was thinking about discussing on camera that I, um, I think I'm not going to, and that was the shipping process and the buying process. I think that's better in text because I can have tables and all that kind of stuff. Suffice to say that if you're planning on buying a laser machine like this, 
shipped from China. The letters FOB means freight on board and the meaning of them is that you will be spending at a minimum $600 on customs fees, dock fees, clean truck fee, ISF filing fee, FDA fees, uh, bonds, two different kinds of bonds for the customs um, broker. So just know whatever the price is, whatever they tell you the shipping is going to be, add $600 at least to that and you'll be in the ballpark. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, please thumbs up and subscribe.